Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Learning Japanese. Today we are doing some more anime vocabulary and in this video we're going to be covering another episode of Haikyuu Second Season and the episode that we're covering today is the 14th episode. So without further ado, the vocabulary terms that we are going to cover are as follows. Number one, Henso, which is going to translate to disguise. Number two, Seikan, which is going to translate to returning alive or home safe, and this is uh, associative as a baseball term. Number three, yudan is going to translate to negligence or letting one's guard down. And last but not least, hancha is going to translate to reflex. So we'll just jump straight into the examples that these words are using in the episode. So for our first word again, henso, which is going to translate to disguise, it is used in the line Moshikashite henso no sumori datta, and this is going to translate to were you trying to be in disguise? <laughs> Let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up we have Moshikashite, and this is going to translate to something along the lines of could it be, or perhaps, or possibly. Right after Moshikashite, we have our vocabulary term, which is Henso, and this is going to translate to, again, disguise. Right after Henso, we have the phrasing no sumori, and this is a grammar pattern that we've covered before. A verb used with the word sumori is going to translate to to intend to do the verb, but sumori can also be used with nouns, and when it's used with nouns, it's preceded by the particle no, so henso no sumori is going to be the intention of a disguise. This could also kind of be interpreted as a noun of a noun modification in which henso is the first noun and sumori is the second noun, so that would translate to an intention of disguise. But yeah, pretty much either grammatical interpretation will work, uh, then right after sumori, which translates to intention, we just have data. And this, and this is just going to be the plain past form of the word des to end the sentence, basically. So, all together, once again, Moshikashite henso no sumori data is going to translate to were you trying to be in disguise? If you wanted to translate this super literally, it would be something along the lines of could it be you had the intention of being under disguise? But we more naturally turn that into just were you trying to be in disguise? <laughs> For our next vocabulary term, we have Seikan, and this is going to translate to returning alive or home safe. So this word is used in the easiest example sentence of the ones that we're covering for this episode, and it is when Hinata just simply says, Kageyama Seikan, and this is going to translate to Kageyama, you made it back alive, or Kageyama, home safe. Ah. Whoa. Kageyama Seikan! So if we break down the sentence, all it really is is just the word Kageyama, which is his name, and then Seikan, which means returning alive or home safe. Ah. Whoa. Kageyama Seikan. Our next vocabulary term is Yudan, and this is going to translate to negligence or letting one's guard down. And this word is used in the sentence, Iyo yo yudan narenai kanji ni kutana. And this is going to translate to something along the lines of, doesn't look like we can let our guard down against those guys anymore, huh? <sighs> So let's break down this sentence bit by bit. So first up we have the phrasing yo, and this is going to translate to more and more, all the more, increasingly, or perhaps most appropriately for this sentence, at last, or finally. Right after yo, we have our vocabulary term in discussion, yudan, and this is going to translate to, of course, again, negligence, unpreparedness, or letting one's guard down. After yudan, we have the word naranai, and naranai is a grammar pattern that is used with verbs to mean must not do that verb. But here we don't really see a verb preceding naranai, so we interpret yudan as being used as a verbal noun here. And the reason why siru doesn't appear, even though it should since yudan is being used as a verbal noun, can probably be attributed to the casualness of the sentence. So yudan naranai is going to be must not let our guard down, basically. We'll see that yudan naranai is actually kind of modifying the word right after it, which is kanji, which translates to basically feeling. So the feeling that we can't let our guard down. Uh, then we have ni natte right after kanji, and this is going to be the te form of ni naru, which means to become. So kanji is the thing that is becoming here, and the reason why it's ni natte in its te form instead of just ni naru is because right after natte is the word kita, and, this, and so kita is the past plain form of the verb kuru, which means to come, and what this will do will give the nuance of it has come to be the feeling of us not being able to let our guard down. And to end the sentence, we just have na, which is kind of a sentence ending particle that is kind of seeking affirmation. So, all together, once again, yo yo, you don't not an kanji ni not kita na is gonna be doesn't look like we can let our guard down against those guys anymore, huh? If we wanted to translate this line literally, it would be something along the lines of it has finally come to be that we 
cannot let our guard down against these guys, hasn't it? Something along those lines. <sighs> now for our last example sentence and vocabulary term, we have the word hansha, which means reflex in the line that is used in, in the actual episode. It's going to be a part of a compound word basically, and it's going to be used as sekizui hansha. And this is going to translate to basically spinal reflex, a pretty scientific term. So the line altogether is Hinata tokageyama wa sekizui hansha de ikite iru kanji da ne. And this will translate to something along the lines of It's like Hinata and Kageyama live on spinal reflex alone. So let's break down this sentence bit by bit. First up, we just have stating the two subjects of the sentence, which are Hinata to Kageyama, Hinata and Kageyama. We have the particle wa marking them as the topic of the sentence. Uh, then we have our vocabulary term here, Sekizui Hansha, and this is going to translate to spinal reflex. Right after that, we have the particle de to basically be an instrument marker. It's saying that the sekizui hansha is the means by which whatever is going to appear right after de happens. And what that is, is ikite iru, and this is going to be the te form of the verb ikiru, which means to live, plus iru to basically denote a continuous action in the present ongoing. So it kind of translates to am living, but we'll more naturally just change that to just live. So that's something along the lines of Hinata and Kageyama live by spinal reflex. Right after ikite iru, we have the word kanji again. It's basically working the same way it worked in the previous example sentence. It's basically just denoting a feeling that Hinata and Kageyama live life by spinal reflex. Uh, then right after kanji, we have da to be the plain form of the word des to end the sentence, plus the sentence ending particle ne just to be kind of emphatic. So all together, once again, Hinata to Kageyama wa sekizui hansha de ikite iru kanji da ne is going to translate to It's like Hinata and Kageyama live on spinal reflex alone. And so there we go, those are four quick vocabulary terms from the 14th episode of Haikyuu Season 2 that you can add to your vocabulary and make your Japanese stronger.